Hello friends. This is Fanfic Adventure. How are you all? So in this video, we will see. What if Naruto was the rebirth of the Super Saiyan bloodline? But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time, let's begin the story. A blonde haired boy with sparkling blue eyes gasped, spotting something heading directly for his pink haired teammate. Pushing the loud girl out of the way, he found 21 kanai, 18 shuriken, 15 senbon, and 3 chains hitting his body hard. He screaming in pain, glared in the direction the weapons came from. He could see three different teams, one from Iwa, one from Otto, and one from Aim. He gritting his teeth, said, Run with the Teme Sakura chan. ILL catch up. Sakura, his pink haired teammate with wide eyes, was about to protest when he turned to her and said, Don't argue, just do it, Sakura chan. She, biting her lip, nodded and took off running with the third team member. He, seeing this, let his eyes soften as he whispered, Goodbye, Sakura chan, I hope you live a wonderful life. Turning back to the three teams, he narrowed his eyes and lifted both of his arms up. He then said, This is as far as you bastards go. I am not going to let you touch either member of my team. He then shot forward and engaged the three teams in battle. He fought valiantly, but in the end, only two Genin were left from the entire group, both being Iwa Genin. He laid out on the ground, with a few spears made of rock, and an umbrella piercing his kidney coughed up a good amount of blood and said, Haku Chan, Makotoheim, Hitomiheim, Tusan, Kasan. I am done but I fought enough that my team can hopefully reach the tower. With his eyes losing color, he reached his right hand into the skyline and asked, I hope I have done enough Kami-sama, have I paid for Kyubi's sins? The two Iwa Genin actually lowered their heads, paying respect to him. The male of the two, walking forward asked, What is your name? The boy turning to regard him with a bloody smile said, Uzumaki Naru. His words died in his throat as the light completely vanished from his eyes. The female walking forward closed his eyes and said, Rest easy Uzumaki-san. Go join your precious oneness in the afterlife. What these two didn't he know was that the reason the life had left his eyes, was because everything was slowing to a stop, as a divine being had decided enough was enough. Naruto was looking around, as he could freely move for some reason. He then blinked spotting someone walking towards him. He narrowing his eyes tried to see who it was. The figure then coming into his viewpoint revealed itself to be shrouded in a dark black cloak. The only thing visible inside of said cloak was twin glowing neon purple orbs. The figure now directly in front of him, said, You will not be dying today Naruto-san. Naruto narrowing his eyes further asked, How do you know my name, and who are you? The figure smirked revealing large glistening fangs. She then said, I am the goddess Kalos, mother of all monsters, progenitor of the extinct great demon dog clan, progenitor of the extinct cold clan, and eldest sibling of the four goddess. She then removed her hood to reveal a stunning face, she had long spiky silver hair, with two bangs hanging over her face. Her skin was literally white. In the center of her forehead was a round purple jewel. On each side of her face was two thick black lines. Her eyes had several tomo forming a full moon. Naruto was finding it extremely hard not to blush. She smiling at this said, As for how I know your name, perhaps you remember the voice that would guide you to safety when you were little, or the voice that confirmed your motto when you were deciding if you wanted to become a shinobi or not. Also, how about the voice that pushed you to carry on after Hiku's death? Naruto remembering said voice gained wide eyes and asked, That was you? She smiling said, Yes that was indeed me. The reason why is because I want you, as my child. Yes you and the reason why I want you as my child, is because you fight not for yourself, but for those that you hold dear to your heart. You carry your head high, even with the heavy burden forced on your shoulders. You believe in true love, and that the impossible is possible. She smirking at his stunned face said, Plus you are the only one who will use the power I am about to give you to stay as you are. Not for evil, nor for good you will inhabit the gray area. Naruto was about to say something when he found his body free of its chains and the many weapons in it. She taking off everything, including his boxers, started making delicate, intricate, 
and small seals all over his body. She then applied small shallow cuts along parts of his body. The last thing she did was place a very large seal over the one keeping the Kayubi at bay. She looking him in the eyes smiled and said, Prepare yourself to become pure power incarnate. Oh and by the way this procedure will turn you mostly female, but you will gain both sets of the reproductive system. Naruto hearing this was about to say something again, when she activated the seals, and let some of her blood pour into the cuts. Naruto found himself back in his body, which was burning. He then started to scream as his body started to change. He shot up in height from a short 4.9 until he was easily 6.4 feet tall. He then felt his hair grow out, until it was to the middle of his back. Feeling thick powerful horns grow from his head, he screamed even more as something burst from his tailbone. Feeling his the muscles on his arms and legs get stronger, he gasped at the pure power his body was putting out. His eyes landing on his hands, watched as they tripled in size, his hands now being the size of three human heads. Thick black curved claws appeared on each finger. He then felt his chest expand, until it felt like two watermelons were hanging from his chest. He then felt his still body be covered in thick armor, and could feel some spikes grow out along the forearms, shins, and shoulders. He then felt some clothing being placed on him. Kalos smiling then produced a full body mirror. Naruto peering into the mirror, gasp spotting his new look. He had long flowing spiky silver hair, his skin was no longer tan, but was pale. Huge thick black horns could be seen poking from his skull. His face was heart shaped. On each side of his face were three thick purple marks, and in the middle of his forehead was a purple full moon. His once blue eyes were now golden, with several tomo forming a crescent moon. His arms were muscular, some veins visible on each side. Said arms were covered by the sleeves of a purple kimono, with green vines splashed on the front. Under that black plate armor could be seen. Over his left shoulder connected by a silver pauldron was what looked like silver dog fur. This kimono was slightly untied revealing very large, garbed in black plate armor. His legs were just as muscular as his arms, but power could be seen coiled in each muscle. The final touch was the long pale tail swaying behind him. The tip of said tail covered with black plate armor. Naruto opening his mouth, could see the four fangs his mouth now contained. Softly touching his face, he asked, What the hell Kasama? Kalo smiling said, This is your second form baby. In this form you are ten times more powerful than the Kayubi. You may also gain a slightly psychotic and sadistic personality. You also now have the Mokaton, Yotan, Hyaten, and Rantan bloodlines. You also have a Daiyokai form. She then reaching into her cloak, pulled out a sword in its sheath and handed it to him. She smiling said, I am also giving you this sword custom made for you, with the tears of a phoenix, flames of the sun, blood of a dragon, dying light of a star, venom of a basilisk, and the souls of billions of humans. This sword is called Majin Jubi. She handing Naruto the sword kissed him on the forehead and said, Have fun baby, and know that Ka-sama loves you very much. She was then gone. Naruto closing his eyes whispered, Sakura and Tem have stopped near the tower. Most likely waiting for me to catch up. Opening his eyes he said, I will let them wait as I need to test my power. He then creating the ram hand sign called out, Shadow Clone Jutsu. A huge poof of smoke obscured the clearing. When it cleared, 350 Naruto's could be seen. Smirking he said, Go my clones, destroy all that you come across, gather scrolls, weapons, do not lay in finger on any Konoha Genin. The clones nodding, vanished. Naruto himself, vanished also on the hunt for a genin to slaughter. Chapter 2 Two days later, and Sakura was wondering if Naruto was still alive or not. She was also wondering what was the cause for the forest to be shaking so badly. She turning her head, wine spotting the still in pain Sasuke. She was getting really tired as she hadn't tea gotten any sleep in the past two days, and was running ragged. Suddenly something shot out of the bushes. Tossing a kanai at it, she blinked spotting a dead squirrel with an explosive note on its back. This made her tense up, just as the team from Otto jumped out from the bushes. Sakura pulling out another kanai took up a defensive position in front of Sasuke and asked, What do you freaks want? Dosu sneering said, We want the Uchiha wake him so that we may kill him. 
Sakura hearing this asked, Why do you want to kill Sasuke-kun? Zaku rolling his eyes said, It s none of your business wench. Sakura scowling said, It is my business freak, I won't let you harm my Sasuke-kun. She then rushed the auto genin and proceeded to get the stuffing beat out of her, she was soon being held by her hair by kin, as Zaku and Dosu approached Sasuke's hiding place. Then a green blur burst from the tree lines, and Zaku was kicked square in the jaw. The blur was revealed to be Rock Lee, who after shouting about the flames of youth attacked the two male sound genin and got the stuffing beat out of him too. Ino and her team tried to help, but they got beaten also. Finally Neji and Ten Ten appeared, and Zaku was getting really tired of Konoha genin. Sasuke then woke up and proceeded to attack the sound genin and everyone else he could get his hands on, not caring who it was. He was about to kick Ino again, when he was suddenly hit by something harder than a cement brick. He looking at what it was, gasp spotting the changed Naruto's fist. Naruto looking down at Sasuke, shook her head and said, Arrogant trash, I did not risk my life for you to go on a rampage resulting in you almost harming two of the possible many mates for me. Sasuke getting to his feet barely snarled and asked, Who are you, and how dare you touch an elite like me? Naruto hearing this started to laugh, at first it was short and pleasant, but soon it was maniacal and loud. She ending her laughter said, You fool! Compared to me, you re nothing but trash, she cracking her knuckles said, I do believe it s time I put you in your place. She then vanished, and the next thing anyone knew, Sasuke was being beaten like he stole something and was a runaway slave. Sasuke hitting the ground, revealed himself to be unconscious. Naruto appearing turned to look at the others around her and said, so done. Two days later, and Sakura was wondering if Naruto was still alive or not. She was also wondering what was the cause for the forest to be shaking so badly, she turning her head, wine spotting the still in pain Sasuke. She was getting really tired as she hadn't gotten any sleep in the past two days, and was running ragged. Suddenly something shot out of the bushes. Tossing a kanai at it, she blinked spotting a dead squirrel with an explosive note on its back. This made her tense up, just as the team from Otto jumped out from the bushes. Sakura pulling out another kanai took up a defensive position in front of Sasuke and asked, What do you freaks want? Dosu sneering said, We want the Uchiha wake him so that we may kill him. Sakura hearing this asked, Why do you want to kill Sasuke-kun? Zaku rolling his eyes said, It's none of your business wench. Sakura scowling said, It is my business freak, I won't let you harm my Sasuke-kun. She then rushed the auto genin and proceeded to get the stuffing beat out of her, she was soon being held by her hair by kin, as Zaku and Dosu approached Sasuke's hiding place. Then a green blur burst from the tree lines, and Zaku was kicked square in the jaw. The blur was revealed to be Rock Lee, who after shouting about the flames of youth attacked the two male sound genin and got the stuffing beat out of him too. Ino and her team tried to help, but they got beaten also. Finally Neji and Ten Ten appeared, and Zaku was getting really tired of Konoha genin. Sasuke then woke up and proceeded to attack the sound genin and everyone else he could get his hands on, not caring who it was. He was about to kick Ino again, when he was suddenly hit by something harder than a cement brick. He looking at what it was, gasp spotting the change in Naruto's fist. Naruto looking down at Sasuke, shook her head and said, Arrogant trash, I did not risk my life for you to go on a rampage resulting in you almost harming two of the possible many mates for me. Sasuke getting to his feet barely snarled and asked, Who are you, and how dare you touch an elite like me? Naruto hearing this started to laugh, at first it was short and pleasant, but soon it was maniacal and loud. She ending her laughter said, You fool! Compared to me, you're nothing but trash. She cracking her knuckles said, I do believe it's time I put you in your place. She then vanished, and the next thing anyone knew, Sasuke was being beaten like he stole something and was a runaway slave. Sasuke hitting the ground, revealed himself to be unconscious. Naruto appearing turned to look at the others around her and asked, So does anyone else want to join Teme in the land of unconsciousness? Everyone including the woke sound genin shook their heads negative deathly scared of the girl. Naruto smiled at this, and released her transformation. Her form reduced until she was five, three feet tall, her hair curled up into a loose ponytail, and her horns reduced to make them less menacing. 
Her tail vanished, along with the many spikes. Her also reduced until there was just enough for a hand. She retained the muscles though, along with the plated armor. Naruto popping her neck, turned to Sakura and smirked, revealing her large fangs. Her glowing gold eyes was now sporting four crescent moon-shaped marks, sitting on a solid black ring. Her pupil was slitted, and black as the night. Her fingernails were also painted black and looked like they belonged to royalty. Naruko looking Sakura in the eyes said, I told you I'd catch up Sakura-chan. Sakura eyes widened as she only knew one person besides her parents who called her Sakura-chan, she asked, Naruto. Naruto laughing loudly said, the new and improved version. She then gaining a serious face walked over to Sasuke and put him on her shoulder. She then walking over to Sakura lifted the surprised pink-haired girl up with her other hand. Naruto then turning around walked over to Kin and said, I know that you hate your teammates. Come with me and be my loyal servant, and be safe from all threats. Kin managing to get up nodded and said, Hi Naruto-sama. Naruto smirking at this said, Good. Come girl we head to the tower as I wish to end this exam. Naruto then walked out of the clearing, the limping kin right behind her. Ino blinking turned to Shikamaru and asked, Was that really Naruto? Shikamaru nodding sighed and said, Troublesome Uzumakis. Naruto arriving at the tower with her team, kicked open the door, and gently set Sakura down on the floor, while she tossed Sasuke to the ground hard. Ignoring Sakura's glare at her she read the writing on the wall, Rolling her eyes, she reached into her kimono and pulled out several pairs of scrolls, all bundled up with a thick rope. She opening them all, threw them at the wall, crossed her arms and waited. In a plume of smoke, the senseis to all of the teams she had killed along with Uruka appeared. Uruka gaining wide eyes turned to Team 7 and asked, How did you get so many scrolls? Naruto smirking sadistically said, I collected them after I tested my power on them. I can still hear their screams as they fell one by one. She didn't notice how, Sakura had quickly scooted away from her, how Kin was looking at her with slight fear, how Aruka was wondering what the hell happened in the forest, or how the other sensei, were looking at her with confused looks. Naruto shaking her head asked, Aruka sensei how many days do we have left? Aruka shaking his head sighed and said, sadly you all made it on the last day, so I'm afraid you get no rest follow me to the room. Naruto nodding skipped behind the man, while Sakura helping Sasuke walk, followed behind her. Kin who was still limping followed after them, trying not to upset her new master. Arriving in a large room, the genin gathered on the floor, most of them staring at Naruto with wonder. Sarutobi coughing into his hands, started to explain things. Naruto was trying not yawn, but sadly it won the battle. Sarutobi looking at her asked, are you not finding this interesting Naruto-chan? Naruto looking him dead in the eyes said, Old man I've never been so bored in my life. Even one of Aruka's lectures didn't bore me this much. Let's just get on with the fighting part, in fact let's get on with my match so I can take a well-deserved rest. Sarutobi sweat dropping, moved out of the way so that Hayate could start the prelims. Kabuto of course quitting. Naruto didn't care, as she was simply waiting for her match to begin. She spotting Ino and Sakura battling said, Both of you stop fooling around. Ino stop pulling punches. Sakura start using your head better. Put your stupid and pointless arguing over the brooding king of Castle Emo to side and show these people, just how strong Konoha Kunoichi are. Like a flip was switched both girls started to fight harder, and before long both girls were rushing each other with one last attack ready. The match ended in a double knockout but it was much better than most people thought it was going to be. Naruto then watched the match between Hinata and Neji, and was very proud that Hinata was trying so hard. Her blood boiled though, when Neji tried to kill the girl for telling him something he didn't want to hear. Lucky for the prick, Kakashi sensing her rising killing intent had stopped Neji from doing so. Neji with a sneer on his face said, more special treatment for the main house I see. Kakashi then did something that shocked many people when he put his book away and said, no. I'm not giving Hinata special treatment by saving her life. What I am doing is keeping you from becoming a blood stain on a pair of size 9 women's sandals. Courtesy of my very pissed off newly psychotic, extremely sadistic, sword swinging student, who is emitting enough killing intent it would scare Orochimaru away. All eyes turned to Naruto, 
who was giving Neji a smirk that actually made the hidden Orochimaru shiver in fear. Naruto lifting up her left hand, created a glowing ball of purple energy, she looking Neji in the eyes said, This is what Kakashi Sensei just saved you from fool. Everyone winced when she crushed the ball in her hand, and the loudest crunching sound spread throughout the room. Neji pale and sweating, quickly made his way back to his seat. Naruto's time to shine finally came when her name was called out along with Kiba's. She walking down to the arena ignored when Kiba said something about it being an easy win. Instead she turned to the watching Kin and said, Kin this is the power of your new master. She then turned to Kiba who snorted and said, if that stupid girl chose you as her new master, then she's a bigger fool than you. Naruto hearing this, narrowed her eyes and said, Hayate I suggest you start the match so I can put this arrogant dog in his place. Hayate starting the match moved just in time, as waves of purple chakra started rolling off Naruto, who had an insane smirk on her face. She reaching for Majin Jubi started to cackle with pure insanity. Brawley's laugh. She then vanished and Kiba barely rolled in time, to not be sliced to pieces. Naruto appearing again, twirled Majin Jubi revealing it to the eyes of all watching. The blade was six feet long, solid pink, and had jagged edges. The guard was a black six-sided shuriken. The hilt was solid black with pink diamonds braided with what looked like black hair. Naruto vanished again, and this time Kiba didn't dodge, and tried to block with a kunai. The result was for the kunai to break, and his body to be covered with small cuts that were oozing not blood, but a pink substance. Naruto appearing back in her spot smiled and said, This match is over. Kiba and others quirking an eyebrow asked, How? She tilting her head said, Majin Jubi's special ability is that she doesn't just cut her targets, she turns their blood into the pink substance leaking out of you. That substance is a living breathing being, that eats away at the target's blood, chakra, soul and mind. If not removed, the target will become an extension of Majin Jubi's will. She also mutates the target's natural abilities and any bloodlines they may have. With you, you would merge completely with Akumaru, and become a raging uncontrollable pink werewolf, not to mention you would be unstoppable as even if you were blown to millions of tiny pieces you would just regenerate. Everyone hearing this gained wide eyes, and Kiba quickly said, Proctor I forfeit. Hayate with wide eyes nodded and said, Winner of the final match Uzumaki Naruto. Medics. Naruto putting Majin Jubi back in her sheath waved her hand and all of the pink goo came out of Kiba. She crossing her arms said, No need he will be fine, I wouldn't recommend too much movement for while though as he's gonna be sore. Hayate nodding then called all of the winners to the arena, everyone then drew numbers from the box. Naruto spotting her number said, I got three, what a lousy number. She then heard Gara mumble, Yes mother I will get you the blood of the Uzumaki. Naruto turning to him, looked at his number and smirked spotting four. She laughing said, Oh goody I get the psychotic Jinchuriki first. She then gaining a devilish smirk said, Jubi-chan can't wait to spill your blood, and turn you into her little puppet. She then started to laugh even louder, ignoring how everyone, including Anko scooted away from her. She shaking her head combed a stray strand of hair back and asked, Are we done here? Sarutobi nodding said, Yes dismissed. Naruto meet me in my office. Naruto nodding said, Yes old man. An hour later and Naruto was listening as half of the council ed about her being stronger than their precious Sasuke, while the other half was staring at her with interest. Her eyes moving to the ceiling narrowed. She pointing two fingers there she said, Key release, death beam. From her two fingers a purple beam appeared and pierced a blank faced Anbu through the heart. She standing up narrowed her eyes and asked, why is this Anbu different from the other Anbu and why the hell was it listening in on a private conversation? All eyes turned to Danzo who said, I don't know what you're talking about. Naruto snorting asked, Old man can I feed him to Majin Jubi? Sarutobi actually thinking about it sighed and said, Sadly you cannot, but you are dismissed. Oh and welcome to Konoha head of the cold clan. Naruto nodding walked out of the chambers. Feeling sleepy, she teleported to her apartment. Landing on her bed, she was swiftly sleeping soundlessly. Naruto waking up the next morning yawned and instantly felt like killing someone. Shaking her head, she walked into her shower and turned it on, 
dropping her kimono and somehow removing her armor. She washing her hair, was wondering what she was going to do today. Stepping out of the shower, she slipped on a white shirt and a pair of black pants. She then walking into her kitchen was about to grab something to eat from the cabinet when there was a loud knock on her door. She groaning walked to her door and yanked it open planning on giving whoever was a piece of her mind and maybe a death beam through the heart. She blinked spotting her new mom standing in front of her with Eno beside her for some reason. Kalo smiling said, Naruto I'm here to train you for the month. The plan is to unlock two more of your transformations. Oh and hopefully fully unlock Majin Jubi's power. You have three hours to prepare as we will be training in the 13th dimension where gravity is 20 times normal. Kalos then vanished in a burst of light. Naruto turning to Ino quirked an eyebrow and asked, Why are you here Ino? Ino blushing said, I wanted to thank you for stopping Sasuke and helping me see the light. Naruto quirking an eyebrow asked, How? Ino gaining stars in her eyes said, I'm taking you shopping, and out to eat. Before Naruto could protest, she was grabbed by the wrist and dragged out of the home. Ino dragging her to a very expensive restaurant approached the head waiter and said, Table for Yamanaka. The man spotting her, bowed and said, Ah yes Mrs. Yamanaka please follow me to your balcony seats. Ino dragging Naruto the balcony, sat down in her seat and said, Order as much food as you want. Daddy said he's paying as you most likely saved my life. Naruto hearing this picked up the menu and drooled at all of the choices. When the waiter arrived Ino ordered the grilled chicken salad. Naruto ordered everything on the menu, three times. The waiter sweat dropped hearing her order but nodded anyway. Ino somehow knowing that it was going to take a while for their food to cook looked Naruto in the eyes and asked, so what's with the changes, and why do you look so hot? Naruto blinked hearing this, but blushed not really considering herself hot. Coughing into her hand she said, well you see during the second exam, after Tem got that evil hickey from Orochimaru I. From there she explained everything to Ino, who by the time she was finished, was staring at Naruto in pure wonder. Naruto blushing said, Ino you're staring. Ino shaking her head said, wow and I thought Sasuke had a dark past. Yours tops his by miles. Hell if the girls knew your dark past, you'd be swarmed with girls. Naruto shaking her head looked out of the balcony and smiled spotting Konohamaru being chased down by Uruka, as it reminded her of the younger her. She then turning to Ino asked, Hey Ino do you wanna maybe hear a song I wrote? Ino gaining stars in her eyes said, Yes Naruto I would love to hear song you wrote, just as long as you're singing it. Naruto blushing turned her face away said, Okay well it's called Broken Pieces, and I kinda wrote it when someone very precious to me died. Please don't laugh. Broken Pieces by Apocalyptica feat Lacey formerly of Flyleaf. I don't own but do recommend this song. Too late this is not the answer. I need to pack it in. I can't pull your hair together with just my voice alone. A thousand shards of glass I came to meet you in. You cut the piece out of me. And as you ripped apart it all apart. That's when I turned to watch you. And as the light in you went dark, I saw you turn to shadow. If you would salvage some part of you that once knew love. But I'm losing this, and I'm losing you. Oh I've gotta turn and run. From faces of never see. Oh I've gotta save my blood. From all that you've broken. And pack up these pieces of me. It's too late now to stop the process. This was your choice you let it in. This double life you led is eating you up from within. A thousand shards of glass you pushed beneath my skin. And left me lying there to bleed. And as you showed me your scars. I only held you closer. But as the light in you went dark I saw you turn over. I wanted always to be there for you and close to you. But I'm losing this. And I'm losing you. Oh I've gotta turn and run. From faces of never see. Oh I've gotta save my blood. From all that you've broken. And pack up these pieces of me. The broken pieces. Pack up these pieces of me. The broken pieces. Pack up these pieces. Maybe without me. You'll return to all the beauty I once knew. But if I stay I know. We will both be drowned by you holding on to me. Oh I've gotta turn and run. From faces of never see. Oh I've gotta save my blood. From all that you've broken. And pack up these pieces of me. The broken pieces. Pack up these pieces of me. The broken pieces. 
Pack up these pieces of me. Naruto ending her song turned to Ino and blinked spotting the large hearts in her eyes. Naruto looking around in the building could see a lot of people looking at her with hearts in their eyes. She blushing asked, how was that? Ino squealed and said, that was the most romantic, most lovely, most heartbreaking, most epic song I've ever heard. Ino then staring at Naruto with wonder and little lust said, it was like listening to an angel sing. Like witnessing a master painter paint a masterpiece. Like getting the last cookie in the cookie jar. Like going on an endless shopping spree. Like having your cake and eating it too. She then sighed and said, Naruto your voice is simply heavenly. This is now officially our first date, as I'm no longer interested in that stuck up crick Sasuke. Know from this moment on all of my romantic attention is going to be focused on you. Naruto hearing this both sweat dropped and blushed. Just then a sniffling waiter appeared with all of their food and said, it's on the house for such a lovely performance. Young lady you are welcome here for the rest of your life, and the meals will be on the house. He then ran away trying to stop himself from crying. Naruto spotting her food, licked her lips, and proceeded to chow down while Ino ate her food while watching Naruto eat her plates. Naruto finishing her food, sighed in happiness and asked, where to now Ino-chan? Ino gaining stars in her eyes screamed, shopping. Naruto then found herself being dragged out by Ino who lead her into many stores, even the bra store which made her blush up a storm. When the shopping was finally over Naruto and a bunch of clones were carrying multiple bags, most of them belonging to the very happy Ino. Naruto arriving at the door of Ino's home, set the bags down, smiled and said, thanks for the food, and the other stuff Ino. I gotta get home and put this stuff up and get ready for mom's training. Ino smiling kissed Naruto on the cheek and said, you're welcome Naruto Haim. I'll be cheering for you in the finals ya know. Somehow I get the feeling that it's going to be wild. Ino then walked into her home with her bags. Naruto with a huge blush on her face ran back home with her clones. Putting away her bags, she put back on her armor and kimono and grabbed Majin Jubi, just as Kalos appeared. Kalos with a smirk on her face asked, so how was your first date? Naruto blushing said, I have no idea what you're talking about. Kalos giggling said, sure you don't. Anyway come on it's time for your torture to begin. Naruto blinking asked, you mean training don't you? Kalos gaining an evil smirk said, I know what I said. She then ripped open a portal and tossed Naruto inside of said portal. Naruto landing, felt like she had been super glued to the ground, as she couldn't move her body at all. Lifting her eyes up she gasped spotting how messed up her new training ground looked. There was huge chunks of land floating in the air, frozen water spewing from broken waterfalls. She could even see what looked three suns in the sky. Kalos landing beside Naruto smirked and said, Welcome to Dimension 13 the dimensional rift, or as you'll be calling it for the next month home. Kalos then said, your first exercise is getting to your feet. You have one day to get to your feet or I unleash the hell hounds. Naruto hearing this gained wide eyes and started cursing. She instantly started trying to push herself off of the ground. A day later and she was barely standing, her skin soaked with her on sweat, and her eyes boring holes in Kalos who was picking her teeth with her pinky finger. Kalo smirking asked, what's the matter baby? Naruto growling said, I despise you. Kalo's laughing said, oh baby by the time we're done you're going to curse me to the very depths of hell, and hate me more than you hate Uchiha Sasuke. Naruto hearing this growled and said, I will never hate anything more than I hate Uchiha Sasuke. Kalo smirking again said, we'll see. A month later an Ino was standing in her seat trying to spot her newfound love. Sakura sitting beside the girl, huffed and said, sit down Ino pig, Sasuke-kun hasn't arrived yet. Ino snorting said, I'm not looking for King Duck but of Castle Emo McBrood. I'm looking for my dark queen of Castle Dreamy. My sadistic blood crazy sword swinging, very wise siren. My artistic, unstoppable demon holding babe. Sakura hearing this gasped and asked, Ino you're a lesbian. Ino turning to Sakura said, don't act all high and mighty. Clans inbreed all the time, so what if I wanna be with a woman? Besides you should be happy now, Sasuke Tem is all yours. J. 
Us then someone sat down behind the two girls and they heard a male voice they were very familiar with ask, so you don't have feelings for Sasuke-san anymore. Ino turning to find Asuma said, nope I'm so over him. Asuma smoking his cig asked, who has your attention now? Ino gaining large hearts in her eyes, some drool escaped her mouth and blood dripped from her nose. She then said, Uzumaki Naruto, my siren. Sakura hearing this gagged and said, that's disgusting Ino. How could you have romantic feelings for such an loud-mouthed weak orange-wearing idiot? Ino hearing this suddenly turned icy, and turned to Sakura with a sickly sweet smile on her face. She then asked, what did you just say about Naruto Haim? Sakura gagging again said, he's not a princess. He's nothing but a low life, trying to be regal. If anyone was royal it'd be Sasuke, not Naruto Baka. Ino hearing this, connected a hard fist to Sakura's jaw and said, you will stop talking about Naruto like that trash. She then ignoring the wide eyes of everyone around her, went back to her search. Down on the arena, Genma said, all right there's been a change to the lineup. The fourth match will now be Nara Shikamaru versus Tamari. Shikamaru hearing this mumbled out, troublesome. Genma then said, now the first match is Uchiha Sasuke versus Hayuga Neji, both contestants stay on the field, the rest of you get to the box. All of the genin nodding did as they were told, leaving Neji there with his arms crossed. Genma then said, Uchiha Sasuke you have five minutes to appear or you'll be disqualified. Up in the cage box, Sarutobi had a deep scowl on his face as he said, that boy is a pain in my ass. He and the council are annoying the shit out of me. The case cage said, what are you going to do about him Hokage Dono? Sarutobi said, if he doesn't show in three minutes he will be disqualified, and be forced to do D-rank missions for three months, until he learns the importance of being on time. The case cage hearing this said, surely that's a little extreme Hokage Dono. Sarutobi snorting said, no his arrogance needs to be put down. On the battlefield it had been five minutes so Genma said, the winner of this match by disqualification Hayuga Neji. Neji hearing this, shook his head and said, it seems as fate decided the Uchiha wouldn't even show up. He then walked off of the battlefield and into the competitor's box. Genma coughing said, match 2, Uzumaki Naruto vs Gara of the Sand. Gara appearing a swirl of sand, crossed his arms. Genma saying the same thing he said about Sasuke for Naruto, blink when a dimensional rift appeared across from Neji. A figure then stepped out of the portal, and everyone gasped spotting Naruto wearing a tight white tank top, that was low cut, showing her heavenly valley. On her hands were metal plaited black gloves, that had a strange symbol shaped like a shark on it. She had on a pair of tight black pants, that hugged her frame perfectly. On her feet were thick black boots, with a pointed tip. Wrapped around her left arm was her leaf headband. Her nails were painted a deep purple, and on her finger was a black ring. Her hair was longer, but was tied into a thick braid. Her eyes were hard and cold. Resting against her right hip was the sheath of Majin Jubi. She not moving her eyes from Gara asked, Am I late? Genma licking his dry lips said, You still had five minutes. Naruto hearing this said, Good, now then start the match and get as far away as you can. This isn't going to be a fight, you'll be able to survive. Genma hearing this nodded and shouted, Match 2, Uzumaki Naruto vs Gara of the Sand begin. He then vanished to the audience, to be safe. Naruto seeing this, snapped her fingers and a large purple barrier appeared. She setting her eyes on Gara said, Just a precaution. Gara smiling insanely said, Mother is screaming for your blood Uzumaki. I'm going to feed it to her. Naruto responded with her own insane smile and said, Funny you should say that. My mother told me to beat the living shit out of your candy ass. Why? Because that's the bottom line. She then vanished and Gara's sand started to move fast, blocking her attacks. Yet Gara was moving back an inch each time she punched or kicked him. He with an angry snarl said, Stay still Uzumaki mother wants your blood. Naruto responded with a key blast to his back, turning some of his sand into glass. She then appearing in front of him, landed a devastating punch to his jaw, sending him flying a few feet away. Gara getting up revealed his armor to be cracked, and insane gleam in his eyes. He then screamed, 
Yes make me feel alive Uzumaki. Naruto smirking licked her lips and said, My pleasure freak. Outside of the barrier, Ino was cheering her blonde tail off. Sakura couldn't believe that she was watching Naruto. Asuma was chuckling with glee glad that he had placed some bets on Naruto. The audience was watching the match with rapt attention. Leon Crutches was shouting, while tears came from his eyes. Guy also crying said, Yash Naruto chan is showing the true power of the flames of youth and helping Gara san feel alive. He didn't notice how everyone swiftly moved away from him. Neji, with his Byakugan activated, was starting to feel fear, as Naruto's entire body was shrouded in an invisible aura of energy. Tamari watching was stunned as Naruto had just single handedly ruined their plan, and was actually making Gara work. Shikamaru was for once actually paying rapt attention as he needed to prepare in case he had to battle Naruto. Konkuro was cursing like a sailor as Naruko was throwing a monkey wrench into their plans. Shino pushing up his shades said, most terrifying. Serutobi was watching with pure pride as the will of fire shined brightly. Orochimaru tt jog, we all know it's him, was silently fuming as not only was he not getting to see Sasuke fight, but the Kyubi brat had ruined his plan of using Gara to crush the leaf with her barrier. Anko who was sitting beside a shocked Kurenai had a sign up screaming, kick his sandy ass Naruto Haim. Kurenai coming out of her shock, turned to Anko and felt her eyes widen spotting what Anko was wearing in the sign. The sign read, My mind, body and soul, belongs to Uzumaki Naruto. Queen of the Cold Clan. T. He shirt was Naruto's name stretched across Anko's sizable bosom. Ino was about to cheer some more, when a swirl of leaves appeared. It vanished to reveal Sasuke dressed in black and Kakashi. Kakashi blinking said, Strange we were supposed to appear in the arena for Sasuke's matches surely Naruto has lost already, and they postponed Sasuke's match against Neji. He was shut up by a shoe to his face, from Anko who roared, shut up Hitaki. Naruto Haim is fighting her match now, and Sir Duckbutt of Castle Emo, from the faraway lands of Brood was disqualified, and you're late. Sasuke hearing this gained wide eyes and roared, what? How dare that old fool disqualify me? I'm the last Uchiha. The Dobi should just give me his match. He's a loser anyway. S. Asuk was then punched very hard by an pissed off Ino, while he found a shuriken just inches from his little friend, courtesy of a glaring kin. Ino blowing on her knuckles said, Shut the up Tem. I'm trying to watch Naruto Haim's match, and if you ever call my dark queen a Dobi or loser again I'll castrate you with a dull rusty butter knife that's been salted and soaked in lemon juice. Every single male that heard her say this, closed their legs, whimpered and covered their little friends. Anko smirking said, if she can't get the job done, then I'll let my snakes finish the rest. This really made the males pale. Just then Gara let out a pain-filled scream. The reason why, it could be the gaping bleeding hole in his right shoulder, that was still smoking. Gara touching it, started to shake and said, blood, blood, this is my blood. He then screamed again and was surrounded by a sand dome. Naruto seeing this crossed her arms and waited for whatever he was doing. Five minutes later, the dome fell to reveal Gara looking like a mini Aikibi. He smiling said, Uzumaki mother will feast on your blood for days. Naruto snorting said, not happening idiot. She then floated into the air and said, allow me to introduce my second form. She then spread her legs and arms and started to charge up. Purple energy then appeared around her body and everyone could literally see her body undergoing a transformation. Pretty soon, she was in the form from the forest, with one major difference. Her tail was thicker and the point was sharper. She touching the ground smiled and said, Behold my second form. She then vanished again, and appeared with her left foot lodged into Gara's gut. Gara flying back launched some sand shuriken at her. She blasting them with her finger said, You'll have to better than that insect. Gara getting up laughed and launched a wave of sand at her, but she simply dodged it with ease. She appearing in front of Gara, landed a bone crushing blow to his stomach. Gara, absorbing the attack, grabbed her tail with one of his sand coated hands. He smirking said, Let's see if crushing your tail hurts. He then squeezed his hand shut tightly, causing Naruto to let out a slight scream of pain. She holding out her left hand said, Fujin. Like that pure wind, 
removed the offending appendage from her tail. She appearing across the arena, scowled spotting a good portion of her lovely tail gone. She turning to look at him said, you'll pay for that with your life. She then extending her two hands fired multiple purple balls of energy into the air. She gaining an evil smirk said, take this sand rat. Key release, hellfire zone grenade. The balls started exploding and Gara started to be tossed around like a old rag doll. She lowering her hands, with an clearly insane gleam in her eyes said, that was one of the attacks my mother taught me while she was training me into the ground. When the smoke cleared it revealed Gara, with half of his body melted, and lots of steaming glass around him. He reforming his body laughed and said, I am thoroughly enjoying this Uzumaki. Naruto now scowling said, well I'm not, since you cost me a good portion of my lovely tail. She shaking her head said, oh well all is fair in love and war. She then vanished, and Gara was launched clear across the arena, from Naruto slapping him with what remained of her tail. G. Aara getting up launched a sizable wave of sand at her, she just glared at it into the disbelief of everyone watching two dark red beams of energy came out of her eyes, and turned the sand in glass. She was then doubled over when Gara appeared in front of her, one of his sandy fists lodged into her gut. He then gave her a devastating uppercut. He seeing her in the air, tripled the size of his right hand and slammed Naruto down on the other side of the arena. Naruto getting up wiped some blood from her mouth. Looking at it, she scowled and asked, how dare you make me bleed? Mia the princess, and upper elite Genin, the ing daughter of Kalos, niece of Kami, Yami and Shinigami. She then gained a look of pure rage on her face roared, I'm going to wipe your from existence you dirty stinking rat. She then vanished, and Gara was getting the living shit beat out of him, as Naruto was little more than a blur. Hell she soon became impossible to see, as in her rage she was steadying increasing her power and speed. She finally appearing over Gara, slammed her fist down on him and said, Die. Gara crashing to the ground, made a huge cloud of smoke appear. Naruto with a proud smirk on her face crossed her arms under her chest. Her eyes then narrowed feeling an intense killing intent flood the arena. The smoke then started to get larger, until it was towering over the arena, and many people wondered what was going on. Outside of the barrier, Ino was watching the battle with an intense expression on her face. Kin, Hanada, Anko, Kurinai, Ayame, and Ten Ten all sitting with her doing the same. Kin when Gara transformed into his mini Shukaku state scowled and said, Naruto-sama has really pushed him. All of the other girls nodded. When Naruto herself transformed, Anko, Kurinai, Hanada and Ayame all gasped and asked, what the heck just happened to Naruto? Ino not turning away from the battle said, it's one of the special abilities of the Cold Clan. They are able to change their form, while increasing their power. Naruto Haim informed me that in this form she's more than a match for the One Tails. Ten Ten sipping on her soda asked, when did she tell you this? Ino gaining a happy smile on her face said, on our first date. I even got to hear her sing. Everyone including Kin hearing this gave her jealous glares. Hanada asked, is it me or did she get more sadistic when she transformed? Kin said, it's a side effect of Naruto Sama's transformation. In her second form all of her sadistic, psychotic, and arrogant tendencies come to the surface. She is also more than willing to slaughter any that get in her way. When Naruto's tail was injured, Ino scowled and said, that little punk. He hurt Naruto Haim's lovely tail. When Naruto did the Hellfire Zone attack, Anko had stars in her eyes as she said, that was totally awesome. It was like watching a million explosive notes go off at one time. Kurinai munching on some popcorn said, it was better than that it was like a million tiny stars exploding. Ayame spotting Gara survived the attack scowled and said, he survived that attack. When Gara landed his combo, and Naruto did her little rant, Ino clapped her hands like an excited little girl and said, he's done it now. Naruto Haim is going to turn him into paste now. Kin hearing Naruto's roar said, oh I think she's actually serious about wiping him from the face of the earth. When she crossed her arms under her chest, many of them felt subconscious, except Anko who whistled and said, Naruto Haim sure has a great chest. My girl's pale in comparison to hers. Ino with a heavy blush on her face said, 
she in her normal form has 42 cc cups. Ten Ten hearing this looked down at her own chest and said, I'm barely in B. Kin snorting said, That's your fault. Naruto-sama has large because her chakra reserves are enormous. Ino pointing to the rising smoke asked, What is that? She was surprised to hear Kakashi say, That is the one tails. Aikibi no Shukaku. Sasuke hearing this smirked smugly and said, The dobi is done for. She'll be crushed by the thing. Sakura with hearts in her eyes said, That's right and then Sasuke-kun will sweep in and save the day. Hanada snorting said, Sasuke-san couldn't save a paper bag from getting wet. Sakura hearing this turned to Hanada and asked, What did you just say about Sasuke-kun? Anko glaring at Sakura's voice said, Shut the hell up you pink-haired banshee. Lord Emo of the shores of Lake Brood is not a hero, in fact he's nothing but a weak little boy, that got upset because his brother killed off his entire clan in one night. Still don't see why Itachi let the runt of the Uchiha live. Sasuke hearing this saw red and was tempted to attack Anko, when Kurenai sent him a powerful glare and said, Do it Genin and you'll be chasing Tora for the rest of your natural life. Everyone paled hearing this, and Sasuke wisely stopped glaring at Anko. Tamari spotting the smoke cloud bit her lip and said, This is really bad. Konkuro beside her said, The plan is shot to hell. He's transforming here. Everyone else was shocked or terrified at the two fighting. Orochimaru was now very interested in Naruto. Inside of the barrier the smoke cleared to reveal the Aikibi at all of his glory. Gara at the very top of said beast, said, Uzumaki you will now witness mother's wrath firsthand. He then crossing his fingers said, playing possum jutsu. A booming voice then shouted, Woohoo I'm free. Time to party. Naruto narrowing her eyes said, I think not rat. She then moved her hand to Majin Jubi and said, Relentless, you stalk your prey. Reckless, you go against nature. Mindless, you wage war with the very gods. Chaotic, you rage against the machine. Hungrily you devour the day. Warily, you beware the darkness. Absorb, consume, invade. I invoke your name Majin Jubi. She then drawing said sword, smirked when a black M appeared on her forehead. She lifting her sword up said, Ju Chan gets a new puppet and I get to tear someone to pieces. Shukaku looking at her said, You talk too much. Shut up and fight. Naruto smiling said, Gladly. She then vanished everyone started to notice huge slashes appearing over Shukaku, who was flailing his arms around like he was trying to swat an annoying fly away. Naruto appearing, was hit by a powerful wind bullet, just as pink goo started to pour out of Shukaku's body. Shukaku spotting this said, If I crush you, then this will stop. Giant sand coffin. A ton sand literally flew at Naruto, who simply stood still with a smirk on her face. Everyone was wondering why, until she said, key release, perfect barrier. Everyone's eyes widened when a green barrier appeared around Naruto and deflected the sand. She smiling at this lifted up her blade and said, now you become my puppet. Die fool, she bringing the sword down laughed when the thick pink goo covered Shukaku and Gara. Screams could be heard from the goo. Suddenly the goo shrunk down to the size of a person. It then quickly took the form of a woman. Nothing else happened for a while, until suddenly Gara was pushed out of the stomach. The goo then retreated and the woman solidified. It was a twenty-something woman with long sandy blonde hair. Her skin was pale, and her eyes were teal orbs, with black slits. She had the body of a goddess. That's when everyone spotted the thick spiked tail swaying behind her along with the black M in the center of her forehead. She was dressed in a dark brown kimono. Naruto smirking said, I present to you Majin Karura. The living embodiment of the sand siblings will, along with the power of the Aikibi. Boosted by the unyielding might of Majin Jubi. Karura lifting her hands to her face said, I'm alive. She touching her face, asked, but how? I was sure I died giving birth to Gara after Chio sealed the Aikibi into his unborn body. Naruto landing in front of the woman with soft eyes said, I brought you back to life, using the power of love and your will to always protect Gara. I also gave you about 30% of my purified yokai. Your actual soul was given to me by Kami, after I helped her defeat the curse known as paperwork. Karura hearing this gained tears in her eyes and said, Thank you so much. Naruto smiling said, 
You are very welcome Karura chan. Now go to your baby boy, he's finally getting some sleep, and when he wakes up he's gonna wanna talk to you. Karura nodding ran over to Gara and picked him up, gently cradling him in her arms. Naruto dropping the barrier, wasn't surprised when Genma appeared grabbed her arm and loudly shouted, Winner Uzumaki Naruto. She was surprised when the crowd burst into cheers, and she could hear many female voices screaming her name in admiration. She dropping her transformation, let a small smile appear on her face and bowed. She quickly blushed when she heard Ino cheer, Naruto Haim looks so hot with that smile on her face. The blush got darker when Kin cheered, Naruto Sama has a blush on her face and it makes her look amazing. Her face then resembled a tomato when she heard Anko say, Naruto Haim owns my mind, body and soul. So keep your filthy hands off of her. She's mine. Naruto vanishing to the competitor's box, was trying hard to make her blush vanish. That plan was shot to hell, when she was pulled into a deep hug by weeping Tamari. She feeling the tears on her shoulder, smiled softly and said, You're welcome Tamari-chan. You too makeup boy. Konkuro didn't even have it in him to say a thing about him wearing war paint as he was so grateful to the girl for not only saving his little brother, but bringing his mother back to life. Tamari ending the hug wiped the tears from her eyes and said, I'm going to go see her. Konkuro forget the plan, we have mom back now. Father can go kick rocks. Konkuro nodding to this said, yeah, I'm going to fight bug boy, not to kill, but to disable so I can just win. Naruto giggling at this asked, if you're talking about the plan to invade Konoha with sound. Then it's definitely not going to work, as not only have I destroyed or captured all of your forces, but I nullified Gara, and the summoning circles have been wiped clean. Tamari hearing this gained wide eyes and asked, How did you know? Naruto giggling again said, I saved Kin Chan. She was so grateful and not wanting to upset her new master that she spilled the beans. Konoha has known about the plans for an entire month now. Konkuro felt his jaw scrape the ground hearing this. Naruto giggling said, you should go fight Shino now makeup boy. Konkuro gaining a tick mark on his head said, it's war paint. He the marched down to the arena, never hearing Naruto giggle out, tell yourself what you want to hear makeup boy. Naruto was about to giggle again, when she felt something soft and furry rub against her hand. Looking down she smiled spotting a lion cub rubbing its head against her head. She scratching it behind its head said, Hello Shiro-kun did Shinigami-chan send you? The lion cub mewled, she giggling said, she's really happy about all of the souls I sent her and wants to give me the summoning contract to the lion clan, including you Shiro-kun. The lion cub, nuzzled her hand, just as Shino was named as the winner. She then hearing Shikamaru mumble about giving up pushed the lazy boy over the rail and said, don't be such a bum, Shika otherwise I might be inclined to inform Yoshino just how lazy her son really is. Shikamaru landing on the ground stood and said, Troublesome Uzumakis. The fight against Tamari was really boring, and Naruto was almost put to sleep. Shaking her head she smiled when it was her turn to face Neji. Jumping down she smiled at the pale Neji and said, Don't worry Tem, I'll make this quick. Neji calming his nerves dropped into the gentle fist style. Naruto giggling said, Oh yeah what I got planned is gonna make you tremble in fear like the miserable worm you are. She then hearing the proctor start the match, literally vanished, and Neji was bent over blood spewing out of his mouth, Naruto's fist lodged into his gut, he was then sent flying by Naruto's tail. He flipping at the last second, wiped his mouth and with visible rage in his eyes said, How dare you try to defy fate. You are nothing but a loser with one impressive trick. I will still be the victor here. Naruto picking in her ear pulled out something green and said, I'm sorry did you say something, because all I heard was wine, wine, wine I'm such an idiot that I can't see the roses for the tacos. She then flicking the green substance to the floor said, how about you battle some warriors my mother gave me. Neji watching the green substance hit the ground blinked when it was revealed to be four seeds. He gained wide eyes when the seeds dug under the ground. Five seconds later four massive surges of power could be felt and honestly it terrified Neji. Four things shrouded in energy burst from the ground covered in dirt. When the dirt cleared Neji felt sweat drip down his head. 
Standing at a max height of four feet tall were multiple green creatures with glaring red eyes and slitted black pupils. He looking up at Naruto paled when he heard her say, I present to you the Sabaman. These creatures are roughly the strength of a Chunin. So they will be your opponents, well they'll be the ones fighting with you with Taijutsu. I'm going to introduce you to the fun game of dodge, now with exploding key balls. Neji hearing this blanched, but had no time to respond as the Sabaman with a creepy screech pounced on him. Naruto off to the side watching as Neji tried his luck with her Sabaman made a glowing ball of purple key appear in each hand. She tossing one at a very slow speed, smiled when Neji managed to jump over the ball, and it hit a Sabaman full force. The creature was destroyed, and Neji was happy, until another one popped out of the ground and jumped right back into the battle. In the stands, Sasuke was scowling as the Dobi had not only defeated Gara, but was now making the Hayuga look like a fool. He was also extremely jealous of the creatures Naruto had summoned thinking that only an elite like him should be able to use said creatures. Ino had stars in her eyes as she screamed out her queen's name. Kurinai was shocked spotting the creatures beating down a prodigal Hyuga like it was nothing. Anko was shoveling popcorn down her mouth enjoying the show. Sakura was extremely angry that once again the Baka was showing her Sasuke kun up. Kakashi was wondering how powerful Naruto was really was. Tamari back from her visit with her revived mother was trying to come up with a way to thank Naruto who had not only brought her family back together, but had given her little brother his life back. Sarutobi was laughing his ass off at how Naruto was once again showing exactly why she was an excellent candidate for Chunin. Orochimaru was now licking his lips planning on making her his next vessel. Kin was wondering if her master was going to stop playing with the Hyuga boy. Ten Ten was drooling at how awesome Naruto was looking right now. Hanada was too busy cuddling with Shiro who looked like he was either trying to escape or trying to nuzzle Hanada. Shiro then mewled, and all eyes turned to him. The entire stadium was then hit with a very loud squeal, as Shiro the poor lion cub was then blonked by every female in the stadium, even Anko. Naruto tossing another key ball at Neji laughed when the boy was blasted away. She then deciding to end the battle pointed her finger into the sky. Neji being lifted up screamed when he was brought in front of Naruto who said, it's over silly boy. She then slammed him repeatedly down into the ground, ignoring the sounds of bones being broken. She then tossing him into the wall said, this match is over as he won't be getting back up for a while. Quote. She then turned to the stadium and giggled spotting Shiro being petted by all of the females, even Sakura was nuzzling the lion. She teleporting back to her spot, snapped her fingers and Shiro was beside her. She smiling down at him said, You're such a good boy Shiro-kun. Shiro mewled as Naruto started to pet him now. Naruto giggling at this sat down put the lion cub in her lap and watched the match between Tamari and Shino. She then turning to her tail frowned spotting the missing hunk of her tail. Sighing she knew that she was gonna have to transform again to regain her wonderful tail. She then sensing something behind her, turned and smiled spotting Eno with hearts in her eyes. Giggling she said, do come sit beside me Eno-chan. Eno without a second of thought, was sitting beside Naruto, leaning on the girl's shoulder, making Naruto giggle at how much Eno loved her now. She turning to the match giggled spotting Shino trying to dodge air blast from Tamari who was keeping far away from Shino's bugs. She then looking down at Shiro giggled as the lion cub was now sleeping soundly in her lap. It was then that a certain Uchiha made his presence known. He walking up to Naruto said, Dobi I demand that you give me your power. Only an elite Uchiha like me can use that power. Naruto snorting said, Go kick rocks Uchiha Tem before I smack you so hard your great grandchildren are disfigured from the slap. Then the pink haired banshee made her presence known as she screeched. Naruto Baka give Sasuke kun your power now. Naruto hearing Shiro growl said, Sakura I suggest you stop screeching before Shiro kun decides to show you his not so cute form. Sakura not being scared said, he's gonna turn into an oversized kitty so what? Naruto laughing said, you do realize that Shiro is a fully trained lion that can eat you in one bite. Sakura blanched hearing this. Naruto then hearing her name called jumped down ready for her match. She blinked spotting some random genin in front of her. She sighing said, this is useless. 
She then after the match started simply backhanded the poor Jenin breaking his jaw and being declared winner. She was about to float back to her seat when white feathers started raining down from all around her. Knowing what this meant she said, Shiro-kun it's hunting time. Leave no sound Nin alive, not even if they surrender. Shiro jumping into the sky transformed from a small lion cub, to a full-grown lion, with pitch black fur, and piercing red eyes. Naruto ignoring this turned to the sound shinobi that had surrounded her. She smirking said, enjoy hell fools. Key release, death beam barrage. She then with a single finger started firing purple beams at the sound shinobi who never stood a chance. The sound shinobi dropping to the ground with gaping bleeding holes in their bodies. Naruto laughing said, foolish mortals. She then floating higher into the sky, smirked spotting all of the sound shinobi trying to fend off Shiro, who was chomping down on any sound shinobi he could find. Naruto blasting some more sound shinobi, turned her head to the purple barrier that had just sprung up where Serutobi was and narrowed her eyes. Floating over to the barrier, she could see Anbu standing outside of it, and Serutobi with a pale snake-faced man inside of it. She touching down outside of the barrier asked, Why are you not helping the old man? One of the Anbu who hated her for the Kayubi said, Because demon if you touch the barrier you die. She ignoring this man, walked over to the barrier and said, Open I command you. Everyone felt their eyes widen when the barrier opened and she was allowed to walk inside of it. She smiling at the shocked look on Orochimaru's and Serutobi's faces said, You should never underestimate me. She then launched towards Orochimaru who quickly jumped back. He going through hand signs said, Edo Tensai. Naruto blinked when four coffins sprung from the ground. The coffins had the numbers 1, 2 and 4 on them, while the fourth had the words Uzumaki on it. Serutobi seeing the coffins tried to stop them from rising. He was too late as all four coffins rose and opened to reveal, Hashirama Senju, Toborama Senju, Minato Namikaze and Mito Uzumaki. Serutobi blanched spotting these four people as he knew that he couldn't even beat his two sensei when he was in his prime, nor could he beat Mito, but he was old now and they were going to destroy him. He then got a good reminder that he wasn't alone when he heard clapping and the laughter of a female. He turning his head sweat dropped spotting Naruto clapping and bouncing in joy, her marred tail swaying with glee behind her. Orochimaru quirking an eyebrow asked, Why are you so happy brat? Naruto laughing more said, Because of your stupidity I get to show you my third transformation and I get my present from Shinigami Ne. Everyone blinked hearing this, and Serutobi felt sweat drip down the back of his head. She then stopping her clapping closed her eyes and started to push her energy through her body, going through her first transformation in seconds. She didn't stop there though, as she continued to charge up, making all of Konoha shake with her immense power. Everyone then witnessed her transforming. Her head elongated and gained about six more spikes. Her shoulders gained thick black spikes. From her elbows even more spikes appeared. Thick claws appeared on each hands. The jewel in the center of her chest, slimmed down until it looked like a cylinder. Her knees gained thick black spikes all around it. Her formerly chopped tail, bulked up and returned to its former glory. Her already large tripled in size, and it was good thing her plate armor was adjustable, or else everyone would be getting an eye full. She finishing the transformation let out a loud sinister laugh, that was deep and sounded much like a man. She was glowing with purple key that was melting the floor underneath her. She smiling at her new form, looked at Mito, Hashirama, Toborama, and Minato with a hungry look on her face. She then setting her eyes on Orochimaru said, Don't blink fool. Sadly he did blink and it cost him dearly. He was blasted back by the sheer force behind Naruto's punch. He flipping over, felt his eyes widen when six balls of purple key was flying after him. He dodging like a snake, barely got past them. Hashirama trying to stop Naruto with his wood. He ended up being torn apart by a pure black ball of ki. Naruto then backhanded Toborama literally crushing his face. Minato appearing beside Serutobi was like, old man who the hell is that beating the snot out of the first and the second. Serutobi with a happy smirk on his face said, Naruto, yes that Naruto and she's totally kicking everyone's ass. Damn if I survive this I'm going to be one rich old man. Mito walking over to the two of them asked, 
Little Saru why do I feel so alive? Saru Tobi ignoring Minato's giggling said, That's because you're alive. My guess is that Naruto being the niece of the death god and Kami has something to do with it. Tobarama screaming in pain stopped the conversation. Turning all three flinched spotting Naruto's tail piercing his chest. Naruto then grabbing Hashirama's face slammed it into the ground and said, I wanna play a game. You, Snake Face and the Water Boy are my victims, oops I meant targets, my bad contestants. Quote. She then tossing him at Tobarama smirked and raised both of her fingers. She then said, Key release, Almighty Death Beam Barrage. When she said this everyone quickly started to dodge spotting the many purple beams, that literally tore through anything it touched. She giggling said, Oi Snake Face, take this full power death beam. Orochimaru ducking, cursed feeling a lot of his hair getting burned off. Hashirama charging towards Naruto, tried to land a punch on her, but he was sadly hit by her tail, that made him turn into dust and the kanai in him come sailing out. She moving to Tobarama started to gently beat the man like he was a punching bag. She then slicing him in half with her tail, reached into the dust body and pulled out the kanai and tossed it down on the floor. Orochimaru seeing this snarled and launched at the girl planning on killing her, but Naruto easily dodged his attack, and was laughing while doing so. She floating into the air launched a small key ball at the snake, who didn't have time to dodge, and was hit with something with the same intensity as the sun. He peeling his body revealed a fresh unharmed body. Naruto cackling in glee said, just like a snake, this is marvelous. She then started to beat Orochimaru like a slave, not even stopping when he begged for mercy. She tossing the snake against his own barrier said, come on you snake-faced bastard I know you can do better entertain me. Orochimaru snarling signaled for his guards to drop the barrier. Once it was down he jumped back and said, now face the power of a fully realized Jinchuriki. Meet Han of the Four Tails. A man in red armor appeared, and before another word could be said he transformed into the four-tailed ape. Sun Goku roaring made the entire village hidden in the leaves tremble. Naruto scowling said, you dare use a Jinchuriki on me. She then gaining an evil smirk on her face said, how foolish of you to do so. Now perish like the pest you are Sun Goku. She then fired a single death beam at the ape, and to everyone's shock, it pierced through the ape, and tore Orochimaru's left arm off. The Yanbi falling down, reverted back to the man, who everyone could see was dead. Orochimaru seeing this scowled and paid for it with a very strong punch to the jaw, sending him backwards. Orochimaru growling decided to stop playing with Naruto and transformed into his eight-headed snake form. Naruto spotting this form, trembled in disgust, which gave Orochimaru enough time to attack her. Naruto getting launched back growled as she stood back up. She turning to Mito said, Mito Haim returned to heaven. I release your soul from the false bounds forced upon it by Orochimaru of the Sanin. Mito smiled and turned into ash, her soul vanishing. Naruto turning to Minato said, Dad go back to Obachan's stomach. I release your soul and return you the land of the dead. Minato smiled and turned to dust as his soul vanished. Naruto turning to Serutobi said, Old man get to the Hokage monument and tell everyone else to follow you the monument. It's time I ended this battle with a bang. Oh and after this you're retiring and making either Jiraiya or Tsunade Hokage. Serutobi nodding vanished and she noticed everyone else follow him to the monument. She smiling at this, floated into the air, until she was floating above Konoha. She raising her left hand said, this attack is going to wipe you and your forces from existence, except maybe the cute foul-mouthed redhead guard of yours. She then roared as an enormous amount of pink key appeared in her hand. The power kept getting larger and larger, until it was as big as fire country. She laughing at the pale faces of everyone not on her side said, this attack is normally used to destroy entire planets but, this powered down version should easily wipe you out. She then putting the floating ball of doom on her pointer finger said, Dodge this, planet burst. The key ball was then tossed at Orochimaru who couldn't dodge. He was blasted, and could feel his body being burned, along with his arms. His followers were also being burned alive, except for Tiyuya who was shell-shocked at the sheer power Naruto was showing. When the attack died down, everyone from the village hidden in the leaves were wide and had their jaws scraping the ground. 
Shi Landing walked over to Tayuya and said, My name is Naruto, and from this day forward I am your master and commander. Tayuya bowing said, Naruto sama I live to serve you. Naruto hearing this laughed loudly and said, Good girl, now come we have business to take care of. Tayuya nodding followed the sashaying Naruto. Two days later and the village hidden in the leaves was still shocked by how powerful one of their genin was. As for said girl, she was in her normal form, in the council room as the old Kutz questioned her newest slave. So far none of the questions were harmful, until Danzo said, I don't believe a word coming out of her mouth. I say we have the Anbu interrogate her and force her to reveal everything before she is put to death. Instantly he regretted saying this as the entire village was forced to its knees by an immense pressure. Sarutobi turning to Naruto, blanched spotting her with a scowl on her face and glaring at Danzo with pure malice flickering in her eyes. She standing up from her seat in the council, walked straight over to Danzo, who was trembling in utter terror. She smiling way to sweetly asked, What did you just say Shimura-san? Danzo gulping said, Nothing Lady Naruto. I swear nothing that comes out of my mouth should be taken at face value after all I'm nothing but an old coot, with an ambition to rule Konoha with an iron fist, please don't kill me. Naruto hearing this tapped her chin in thought and said, HMMPH, request denied. She then fired a single death beam through the man's chest killing him instantly. She turning to face everyone else asked, anyone else have a problem with Teiyu's answers? Everyone quickly shook their heads negative not wanting to draw her wrath. She smiling said, Good now we can move on to the next item of business. It's time for the old man to retire again. So it has been decided that either Jiraiya or Tsunade shall be given the title of Godem Hokage. If neither are willing to take the title then I Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto shall accept the title. This has already run by the Fire Lord and he agrees. She then walked over to her seat and watched as the council spoke about this Serutobi was just about to say something when the doors were slammed open and a chunin ran in saying, Hokage-sama Uchiha Itachi and Hoshigaki Kisame are in the village. Janin Yuhi Kuranai and Janin Serutobi assume are fighting them, along with Jenin Yamanaka Ino and Jenin Suchi Kin. Naruto hearing this instantly shot up and vanished. She reappearing in front of Kisami's sword, placed her tail against it and growled. She could feel Ino's chakra getting low, and Kuranai wasn't too far behind. She then smacked the man away, and turned to Itachi, she rushing towards him grabbed the Uchiha by the neck and slammed him into the ground. Itachi screaming wondered who this was and how she had bypassed his genjutsu. Kuranai being freed from the genjutsu he had placed her in, gained wide eyes spotting Naruto growling at Itachi. She then tossing the man into the wall, dodged Samahata swinging for her head. She then punching Kisame sent the man flying backwards. Turning to Itachi she blasted the man with a ball of purple key. Itachi replacing himself with a log, wasn't prepared for a tail to pierce his chest. He screaming was lifted off of his feet and tossed into Kisame. Naruto then pointing her hand at them said, Key release, death beam barrage. Itachi and Kisame found purple beams of key heading their way. Itachi was hit in the arm and screamed out in pure pain. Kisame was hit in the chest and grunted at the searing pain. Itachi deciding to retreat grabbed Kisame and left, never noticing that Samahata was floating in the water. Naruto noticed though and picked it up with her tail. She blinked noticing that it was purring as her tail wrapped around its handle. She then turning to Asuma asked, Are you alright Asuma-san? Asuma putting a cigarette in his mouth said, I've been better lady Naruto. Naruto rolling his eyes said, Don't you start that shit too Asuma. She then heard someone giggling softly. Turning her head she could see Kuranai covering her mouth as she giggled. Naruto shaking her head asked, What's so funny Kuranai Haim? Kuranai gaining a small blush said, Nothing. Naruto giggling at this, walked over to Ino and Kin. Reaching into her left pocket she pulled out two beans. Putting them in the girl's mouths, she made them chew it. Instantly Ino hopped to her feet looking ready for a fight. Kin popping to her feet also said, I feel like I could pleasure Naruto-sama for days right now. Naruto blushed at this, and slapped the back of Kin's head with her left hand. She turning away said, Damn Kin-chan always saying perverted things around other people, she's almost as bad as the old man. 
Kin getting up spotting Naruto brightened up and glomped Naruto, she placing Naruto's left arm in the valley of her said. Naruto-sama please allow me to escort you home and finally thank you properly for saving me from Orochimaru Teme. Naruto blushing darker said, Baka Kin making me blush in public. Ino then glomping Naruto's other arm said, Naruto Haim my dark queen. I love you and I'll do anything for and with you. Come on let me take you out on our second date. Naruto's face now resembled a tomato and she was thinking the only way this could get worse if as if Anko got involved. You know what they say, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. At that moment, Anko appeared behind Naruto and pressed her assets against Naruto's back and whispered. Naruto-sama. Anko-chan has a present for you for being such a good girl. Naruto was now a shade of red she would make Kayubi's fur look dull. She then teleported back to the council chambers and hid her face in her hands, ignoring the laughter around her, and the giggling of Tayuya beside her. She shaking her hand in her hand she mumbled out, Why must I be surrounded by gorgeous troublesome women? Is this my punishment for deflowering Inari-chan Kamioba? She got the distinct feeling that Kami was in heaven laughing at his misfortune. Jiraiya having been found peeking on some kunoichi was told of the council's decision and quickly refused to be Hokage unless all women were forced to wear skimpy outfits, with the kunoichi having to wear very skimpy outfits. When he said this he got punt kicked by Naruto all the way to the other side of the village as she screamed at him for being a kami forsaken pervert. After that it was decided that Tsunade would become Hokage. The team was being sent out to get her. It would be Naruto leading the team, with Ino, Ten Ten, Kin and Tayuya going with her. Of course Jiraiya was also going to be there, along with the fact that Yuago was going with them. Yuago was trying not to giggle as Kin had one arm of Naruto and was nuzzling into it, while Ino had the other and was cuddling with it. Naruto herself was trying to push the damnable blush down from her face, as she could clearly feel that neither girl was wearing a bra, and both seemed to be trying to turn her on, by rubbing there against her arms. Ten Ten had an adorable pout on her face as she couldn't attach herself to Naruto. Tiyuya was behind the group shamelessly staring at Naruto's very nice ass, with a bit of drool escaping her mouth. Jiraiya walking in front of the group was scribbling in his notepad with a huge nosebleed as what he was hearing and witnessing was pure genius. Naruto looking at the man asked, How exactly are we going to find Tsunade-san, because I have no idea what she looks like and if I sent any of Saibaman after her she'd just fight them and die. Jiraiya shaking his head said, Don't worry about it brat, my toads have her scent and are tracking her right now. Naruto hearing this narrowed her eyes and asked, Just how exactly are your toads tracking her? Jiraiya sweating said, A shirt she wore once. Naruto hearing this narrowed her eyes even more and asked, You're tracking her with a pair of her panties aren't you? Jiraiya sweating even more said, I have no idea what you're talking about. Naruto sneering said, You dirty pervert. If you weren't needed for this mission I'd blast you to Kiri. Jiraiya hearing this gulped and thanked Kami he was needed for this mission. Ino then asked, Naruto Haim are you part of the council now like my dad? Naruto was about to answer when Yuago said, Yes Ino, Naruto Haim is indeed part of the council and is head of the cold clan. She has also been put into the clan restoration act. According to Hokage-sama she's required to have at least nine wives. Kin hearing this instantly said, Naruto-sama will have no problem finding wives. In fact Aisuchi Kin volunteered to be Naruto-sama's first wife. We can start trying to make a baby right now Naruto-sama. Naruto blushed and slapped Kin on the back of her head with her tail and said, Baka Kin-chan, you are as bad as the old man, except you're young and in a female body. Kin shaking her head said, Naruto-sama I'm just trying to make you happy and bear your children. Ino with a scowl on her face said, Naruto Haim I'm going to be your first wife, and I'm going to bear your children first, tell that harlot. Kin hearing this glared at Ino and said, I am not a harlot weakling. Ino getting angry said, Who you calling weak? Kin butting heads with Ino said, You pig. Ino then gained flames in her eyes as she said, Don't you dare call me a pig. She and Kin then got in a screaming match, as Naruto moved away from both girls and was quickly being hugged by Ten Ten and Tayuya. Ten Ten laying her head on Naruto's shoulder asked, Why did you bring those two loud mouths along Naruto? 
It could have been just you, me and Jiraiya-san. Then we could have been making out and I could have given you my sacred flower? Naruto hearing this turned crimson. Tuyuya rolling her eyes said, what the flat-chested panda girl meant to say is that the two of us and the pervert could have found Tsunade by ourselves. After we found her I could have gotten the two of a hotel room, and we would be halfway down the road to having a large family. Ten Ten hearing the insult glared at Tuyuya and asked, who you calling flat-chested flute girl? Tuyuya sneering said, you, panda girl. A cardboard box has more curves than you. Ten Ten reaching into her pouch pulled out a few senbon as she hissed. At least I can look at Naruto without staring at her ass. Tuyuya now holding on to a few kanai said. That's not my damn fault. Her ass is perfect and with her swaying it all the time, you just can help but stare at it. Both girls were soon in a heated argument. Naruto now standing beside Yuago was wondering if her presence turned perfectly fine females into stark raving lunatic fangirls. Yuago giggling could only shake her head at how the four girls were acting. Jiraiya on the other hand was thanking Kami for the goldmine that was Naruto. Naruto turning to Yuago asked. Why did you come on this mission Yuago-chan, not that I mind you being on this mission or anything like that. Yuago giggling said. I was sent by the council to help keep you safe. Plus this gives me the time to get over a certain tragic event. Naruto hearing this nodded and said. So you're the pretty woman Hayate-san was smitten with. Yuago nearly stopped in her tracks, she shaking her head asked, how did you know that? Naruto smiling said, I talk with the spirits of the dead sometimes. Hayate talks to me a lot and told me about this purple haired girl he was smitten with when he was alive. He also told me to tell you that you should move on and just kiss whoever it is that you're crushing on. Yuago hearing this blinked and asked, did he really tell you all of this? Naruto confused nodded. Her eyes widened when Yuago grabbed her and pulled her into a deep searing kiss. At first Naruto was shocked, but she soon got into it and closed her eyes getting into the kiss. She soon found Yuago's tongue in her mouth battling hers for dominance. Her hands moving down to Yuago's rear, pulled the woman flush to her body. Yuago felt like she was in heaven with the kiss, as Naruto's lips were perfect and soft. Naruto was literally melting at her official first kiss, because that one with Sasuke in the academy did not count, and the one with Inari also didn't count. When the kiss ended Naruto had this dazed look on her face, not to mention she was blushing bright red. Yuago on the other hand had a small smirk on her face as she had just stolen a kiss from Naruto and shut up all four girls up. All four of the girls who had been fighting over Naruto, were standing there with wide shocked eyes and gaping jaws. All four girls could only think, that's sneaky. She got all of us away from Naruto, and stole her first kiss. All four girls then gained rain clouds over their head as they all thought, why didn't we think of that? Jiraiya on the other hand was writing in his notepad at a very fast pace, filling up four pages in the blink of an eye. Blood was pouring from his nose and he had the biggest smile on his face. Tears could also be seen flowing from his eyes, inside of his head he was thinking, Thank you O oh glorious Kami-sama for sending me such a gold mine. Not only does she have four pretty Kunoichi already fighting for her, but then the strong silent Enbu steals her first kiss leaving her dazed and blushing. Naruto herself was wondering if it was possible to fall in love from just a kiss, and if Yuago's lips really tasted like miso ramen. Naruto shaking her head free of these thoughts, narrowed her eyes spotting the state Jiraiya was in. She quickly snatching his notepad from him started to read his notes. As she was reading her face was getting redder and redder. Pretty soon her face was as red as Tuyuya's hair. She then started to rip the notepad to pieces as steam came out of her ears. Once the notepad was reduced to trash, she turned to find Jiraiya running for his perverted life. She seeing this screamed out, No you don't you Kami forsaken pervert. I am gonna turn you into a woman the hard way. This statement made Jiraiya pick up speed as a now pissed off Naruto was right behind him holding Majin Jubi in one hand, Samahata in the other, and her tail wrapped around a giant shuriken. Yuago with a sweat drop wondered if she should save Jiraiya or not. Kin picking up the pieces of the notepad with curiosity shining in her eyes, started to put it back together. Ino, Ten Ten and Tuyuya helping her. Once the notepad was back together they started reading it, and soon their faces were bright red with Kin and Tuyuya having a little blood trickling from their noses. 
Yuago deciding to see why they were having this reaction, took the notepad and started to read it. Her face was now bright red and blood was flowing from her nose. She flipping the next page, giggled like a pervert and flipped to the next page. She did this until she had read the entire notepad and now had blood flowing freely from her nose. She was shaken out of her state when there was the sound of something exploding and the ground shook. The air was then disturbed by a shrill voice screaming. No that does not go there. Why are you lighting that shuriken on fire? Oh dear Kami save me. Yuago then turning to the four girls said. Let's go save Jiraiya from being murdered by Narutoheim. All four girls nodded and followed Yuago to the source of the screaming. An hour later and Jiraiya was being drugged by his foot by a still very pissed off Naruto. Jiraiya had barely escaped being turned into a woman, and that took all five females to do that. He was still beat to within an inch of his life, and was now literally dead weight as Naruto purposely drug him very hard, taking care to hit every nook, cranny and rock that was in the way. She had even drugged the man over the fallen remains of a tree. Ino and Kin were once again arguing about who would be her first wife. Tuyuya and Ten Ten were trying not kill each other after some rather nasty comments and a free show courtesy of Ten Ten and Akanai. Yuago was laughing at Jiraiya's misfortune. Naruto was about to drag the man through a stream, when a small toad appeared. It blinked spotting Jiraiya's state and asked, What happened to the pervert? Naruto sending a glare to the man said, He was being a pervert so I punished him. She then turning to the sweat dropping toad asked, Why are you here? The toad shaking its head said, Tsunade is in the next village gambling. If you hurry you should be able to catch up with her. Naruto smirking gained an evil light in her eyes. She then smiling sweetly at the toad asked, Hey how exactly are you guys tracking Tsunade? The toad blinking said, A pair of panties Jiraiya stole from her. Naruto cackling in evil glee said, Why thank you, you cute little toad you. The toad both blushing and sweat dropping vanished in a poof of smoke. Naruto then hurried towards the town still dragging Jiraiya, Yuago quickly following her getting the very strong feeling that Naruto was going to inform Tsunade of how Jiraiya kept track of her. She was right because as soon as she entered the casino, she spotted Naruto talking to Tsunade and her assistant. Tsunade at first seemed normal, until she slowly started to redden, hell she was making a tomato look pale. Poor Shizune was trying not to think of ways of killing Jiraiya and not try to flirt with the girl talking to Tsunade. Tun Tun was glaring at Jiraiya with pure hate. Naruto knowing that just a small push more would have Tsunade doing her dirty work for her said. What makes matters worse is that he was using me and my friends for his dirty books. He had them doing such dirty perverted things. She then pulling out the fake tears and puppy dog pout whimpered out. He had my friend Ino Chan lick me clean of chocolate sauce and had her take her time at my sacred place. She then pretended to cover her face and cry. This got the desired effect as Tsunade had already been trembling with rage, but now she was literally seconds away from exploding in rage. Naruto letting go of Jiraiya with her tail, slowly backed away and out of the casino lobby. Seconds after she was clear, Jiraiya's pain filled screams could be heard as Tsunade beat him like the dirty pervert he was. Naruto hearing his screams smiled and said. Ah the sweet sound of perverted pain. What a delicacy. Yuago shaking her head asked. So when are you going to inform Tsunade-sama why we're here? Naruto giggling said. After my clone cleans out the casino, we all get a soak in the hot spring and I or Tsunade turn the pervert into a woman the hard way. Yuago sweat dropping asked. How about until then? Naruto blinking said. No ideal. Yuago gaining a glint in her eyes said, I have an ideal on what we could do to pass the time. Naruto not noticing the glint in her eyes asked, What's your ideal? Yuago smirking leaned over to Naruto's ear and whispered something into her ear. Whatever it was made Naruto turn bright red, and look anywhere but Yuago. She with a seductive smile on her face purred out, How about it Naruto Haim? Let's get a room in a hotel or book a private room in the hot spring and get you screaming out my name as I moan yours. Naruto's face was now brick red. Yuago sliding her hand into Naruto's lap nibbled Naruto's ear and said, I can't think of a single reason for you to say no. Think about it Naruto Haim. Me on top of you, you under me, our hips joined together as our sweat covered bodies move in sync with each other. 
my jiggling with each movement, my long hair falling over my body, your long hair splayed out underneath you. Me grinding on your lap, you thrusting into my sacred temple. Naruto was now beat red and a little blood could be seen dripping from her nose. Yuago then licking Naruto's ear said, Say yes Naruto Haim. Naruto turning her head mumbled out a timid yes. Yuago hearing this smiled and grabbed Naruto's hand. She paying the bill said, To the hot springs we go, because I can't wait to see how you look not wearing any clothes or any of that silly armor. She then vanished in a swirl of leaves, leaving behind a note for the other girls with a victory sign written on it. The other girls, Tsunade, Shizune and Jiraiya would arrive moments later. Ino noticing the note picked it up red and instantly became furious. Kin taking the note, instantly balled her fist up in anger and stomped on the ground in fury. Ten Ten taking the note read it and she screamed in pure rage. Tayuya not liking the signs took the note and instantly started spewing curses that would make a ship of sailors blush. Tsunade being curious picked up the note and read it. She instantly blushed and handed the note to Shizune. Shizune reading it shot back from a huge nosebleed. This made Jiraiya curious. He grabbing the note read it, and instantly was on his knees thanking Kami and the stars above for his luck. Because the note not only told him what Yuago and Naruto were going to be doing, but also for him gave him directions to location of said events and informed him that he would be keyed into the seals. The only catch was that he had to give Yuago a copy of the finished product, or else she'd let Naruto in on the secret. Jiraiya getting up quickly left pretending to go to a hotel room to get some sleep. Once out of sight he high-tailed it to the location, planning on witnessing every single dirty little act. He didn't know it but he was being followed by Ino, Ten Ten, Kin, Tayuya and the revived Shizun. The group arriving at the location slipped into the seal, and snuck to the peephole Yuago had made. Looking in Ino turned blood red, Kin flew back with a huge nosebleed. Ten Ten started to giggle much like Jiraiya. Tayuya had a big goofy grin on her face. Jiraiya was writing down everything he saw in his notepad, not even moving his face from the peephole. Shizune on the other hand was being very naughty as she played with herself watching Naruto and Yuago go at it like bunnies. When Yuago screamed out Naruto's name in the throes of ecstasy, all five females finally passed out due to brain and pleasure overload. Jiraiya was still writing down everything he saw, his shirt and face a bloody mess. The girls would wake up an hour later to find Naruto and Yuago still going at it and Jiraiya still writing everything down. Then Naruto screamed out Yuago's name and Tayuya decided to sneak into the hot spring and make this little romp a crowd. Once Tayuya entered the mix, things got even louder as Tayuya was being double teamed by the two. Jiraiya was now giggling lowly at the turn of events. He felt his eyes widen when Kin joined in on the romp and was now sucking on Naruto's neck. He then wondered if he had died and gone to heaven as Ino and Ten Ten joined on the fun. He was now giggling quite loudly at the scene straight out of one of his dreams going on inside of the hot spring. That joy quickly vanished, when Naruto bit Ino and said girl gained a huge power boost. His blood ran cold when Ino gained a tail, and the plate-like armor Naruto wore appeared on said girl. Small horns also appeared on the girl's head, he sighed in relief when Ino quickly discarded said armor and went back to the activities. He then realized that this book was going to be his best one yet and would probably sell to both genders, decided that Naruto was going to be the source of his research from now on. He also decided that Naruto was to never find about this or he'd die a painful death, and no matter who tried to stop her he would die. He then hearing Yuago scream out once again, giggled and thought, Oh yeah you're definitely getting a first edition copy of this book. I think I'll name it Cold Icha Icha. Queen's Calling. He then giggled again and went back to writing, ignoring the fact that Shizune was once again on the floor knocked out. The next day, Naruto was helping Ino train in her new powers and her new body. She was also ignoring the constant giggling coming from around her. Jiraiya had also vanished and she had the sneaking suspicion that he was doing something that would make her want to kill him. She moving her head slightly smiled as Ino had just created a flawed death beam. Clapping she said, Good job Ino-chan soon we'll be working on other key attacks, also we'll work on unlocking your first transformation. Now come on, I'm still sleepy from you girls wearing me out. Ino giggling latched onto Naruto and said, Let's go the hotel room my dark queen, 
when we get there I'll give you the perfect massage to help you get to sleep. Naruto was about to nod, when Tsunade appeared and said, let's get back to Konoha so I can become Hokage already and heal the people who need healing. Naruto hearing this was about to whine about how tired she was, when Shiro the lion appeared. He licking her hand mewled. Instantly he found himself in Naruto's arms being protected from the squealing females around her. She sighing asked. Why are you here Shiro-kun? The lion mewled and Naruto gained wide eyes. She then twirling around with the lion in her hand said, what a wonderful thing. Ino being curious asked, what's so wonderful naruto -haim? Naruto smiling said, my contract with the lion clan has been finalized and now I can summon the lion clan. Shiro-kun here is my familiar, I can also sign as many summoning contracts as I want thanks to Kami Oba who is rewarding me for destroying Orochimaru and all of his tainted followers. She then setting Shiro down said, Shiro-kun transform into a size capable of supporting me so that I can ride you back to the village. Shiro Muling quickly shifted into the form of a minivan-sized lion. Naruto climbing on the back of Shiro leaned forward into his soft fur and said, Lead the way Tsunade-san. Tsunade rolling her eyes turned around and started on her way to the leaf, with the others following her. Naruto on Shiro's back with Yuago, pressed against her back also sleeping. Ino was to the right of Naruto with her head in Naruto's lap sleeping peacefully. 1010, Tuyuya and Kin were extremely jealous of what was going on. Shizun was secretly wishing she was in Yuago's place. Tsunade was plotting on how to make Jiraiya into the test dummy for the research lab in Konoha. No one noticed that Kalos was watching from a tree with an amused smirk on her face. She looking at Yuago and Ino said, That's two women already part of the Cold Clan. Kuranai in the leaf makes three, and Tamari makes four. Soon my child will have a harem of women to help her out of that damn shell. She turning her head in the direction of Kumo said, Oh I should probably inform Kashina that she no longer has a child, and that my child is now dominating the shinobi scene. She shaking her head said, I do hope Jiraiya isn't foolish enough to keep everything the same, or else Naruto will kill him painfully. She giggling said, it was nice knowing you Jiraiya of the Sanin, you had a good run as it seems as Shinigami isn't very pleased that you're using her nephew, niece as the main research for your smutty book. She's gonna make you forget to change a thing and Naruto will find out. I kinda feel bad for Yuago-chan, because Naruto's gonna be extremely upset that she was used to create said book. She then shrugging said, oh well she'll learn her lesson and plead for forgiveness. She then vanished in a wave of loving thoughts. Jiraiya at his publisher was giggling in glee as the man read his latest book and was quickly loosing a lot of blood. The man finishing the book looked Jiraiya in the eyes and said, This is your greatest book yet. We're not going to change anything, we're going to keep it 100% accurate. Jiraiya nodding said, Yes and the title will be Cold Icha Icha. Queen's Harem, Part 1. The man nodding said, Done. It'll be published and out in a week. Jiraiya giggling said, send me a few copies as I owe some people copies. The editor nodding said, done. Jiraiya leaving the office side in peace as he was going to finally have a really successful book with both genders. Giggling he couldn't wait to get more from Naruto, he then started heading for Konoha, not knowing that it was going to take him a week and a half to get to said village, and that he was going to be in for a world of pain when he did get there, as one pissed off Naruto was going to be there waiting for him. In her third form. Shinigami behind him did know though and laughed as she said, That's what you get, you filthy pervert. I hope she turns you into a woman the hard way. Once back in the village, Naruto was in her home reading her a book on the council rules, because so far she had been flying by the seat of her pants. Shiro had settled in very nicely and was resting in her lap like the good little lion he was. She yawning was about to put the book away, when there was a tap on her window. She turning to the window blinked spotting Yugao with a picnic basket and a little teal book. Naruto picking Shiro up placed him on one of the shelves and walked over to the window. Opening it, she smiled and asked, What's up Yugao Haim? Yugao smiling leaned in and kissed Naruto on the lips. She ending the kiss stepped into the room and said, I thought I'd make you dinner, since you've been cooped up in here since we got back. Naruto smiling said, Yugao Haim you're such a good girlfriend. She then blinked when Shiro mewled. Giggling she said, 
Shiro Kun hopes that you brought something for him to eat or he's gonna be very upset with you. Yuga o giggling said, I brought an entire ham for Shiro Kun. Shiro hearing this was instantly up pawing at the basket. Naruto giggling picked up the lion and said, I don't understand why you're even hungry, Shiro. I just feed you six plates of bacon and an entire cow. Shiro looking up at her with the puppy dog eyes mewled. Naruto giggling said, I didn't say you weren't getting the ham, I just don't understand why you're hungry. Yugo setting the blanket down, put the basket down and put the contents down on the blanket. Shiro spotting the ham, jumped from Naruto's arms and attacked it with vigor. Naruto laughing at this sat down on the blanket and accepted a sandwich from Yugo. An hour later and Shiro was sleeping on his back his belly being larger than the rest of his body. Naruto and Yugo were cuddling in Naruto's bed. It was obvious to tell who wore the pants in the relationship as Naruto's head was resting on Yugo's chest, with Yugo's right hand resting on Naruto's waist. Naruto with her eyes closed asked. So what is the other reason you came over Yugo-chan? Yugo biting her lip with fear said. Well I have something to show you that's probably going to make you really mad at me. Naruto leaning up looked at Yugo with dubious eyes and asked. What are you hiding from me Yugo-chan? Yugo getting up from the bed, revealing herself to be, walked over to the book she had brought with her. Bending over to pick it up, she really started to worry about how Naruto was going to react to the contents of this book. She sighing walked back to the bed and climbed in it. Handing Naruto the book she closed her eyes and waited for the explosion. Naruto reading the title of the book instantly felt rage build up. It was called Cold Icha Icha. Queen's Harem Book 1. She opening the first page, read the dedication and scowled as it was dedicated to her and Yugo. She then flipping to the next page, felt her blood absolutely boil as the first page had an image of her being pulled in five directions by five familiar girls. She quickly flipping through the rest of the book, was now furious beyond reproach. Her killing intent was leaking and the entire village felt it. Yugo in the same room as the source of the killing intent got really nervous. Naruto gently closing the book, got out of bed, ignoring the fact that she was and walked into the bathroom. Closing the door, she opened the bathroom window and fired off six death beams into the sky. She shutting the window, opened the bathroom door, walked back over to the bed and climbed back in. She laying her head down on Yugo closed her eyes said. I will deal with you in the morning Yugo. Until then I'm just going to sleep using you as a pillow. Yugo was about to say something when Naruto said. Say a single word and I will kick you out of my home, no clothes, no nothing and make you run home. Yugo moving her eyes to the window shut her mouth as it was dark outside and that meant that the creeps were out and about. Naruto yawning said. Good girl now sleep. Yugo closing her eyes knew that it was going to be a long road to redemption for her. The next morning Naruto woke up and climbed out of bed. Walking into her bathroom, she turned on the sink and brushed her teeth. After rinsing she took her shower and used the bathroom. Once done with that, she walked out of the bathroom dripping wet and into her closet. She getting dressed slowly put her earrings in. Once fully dressed she walked into her kitchen and fixed breakfast, ignoring how Yugo and a few others were now watching her ready for her to explode. She fixing a plate of honey glazed bacon set it on the floor, and watched as Shiro tore into his plate. Once done with his plate, he looked up at her with his face covered in honey. She picking him up wiped his face clean with a cloth. She then walking over to the most comfy chair in her home, she sat down in it, and pulled the already snoozing Shiro into her lap. She folding her hands together finally allowed her rage to show in the form of a not so subtle influx of killing intent that crashed down on the village like a tidal wave on a small island. Everyone in the village gulped loudly and some children started crying for their mothers, who in turn cried for their mothers. Naruto with her eyes closed said, you have five seconds to explain just why I shouldn't dump all five of you for this transgression. Ino with her tail wrapped around her waist said, Naruto Haim I would never subject you to that horrible book on purpose. I love you with all of my heart. I'm part of your clan now. You're my dark queen, and I'm your blonde haired follower. I'd follow you into the mouth of the devil if I had to. Naruto hearing this glared at Ino said, yet the both of us are in this book doing things no one should be privileged to. Ino gulped at this. Kin dropping to her knees said, Forgive me Naruto-sama for I have sinned. I laid down with my mistress while knowing that we were not alone. I beg of you to punish me as you see fit. 
Naruto hearing this blinked when Shiro mewled. She smiling said, Kin Chan, you have been forgiven by the grace of Shiro. Your punishment is to be his groomer for the next three years. Kin, still with her head bowed, said, I humbly accept my punishment. Tayuya, dropping to her knees, said, Forgive me, Naruto Haim, as I could not resist your body no longer. I gave in to the tempting scent of your body and didn't do my job of destroying the pervert. Naruto, hearing this, said, I will punish you, Tayuya. You are going to be Anko's training partner for the next three years. You will not complain once or your time will be increased. When you are here you will do what I assign you. Tayuya sweating said, Yes Naruto Haim. Naruto turning to Ten Ten quirked an eyebrow. Ten Ten standing proud said, I will not apologize for my actions. I gave you my virginity and loved every second of it. If I had to, I would do it again. You rocked my world and even now when training with my team, I can still feel my toes curl. Naruto hearing this blinked when Shiro mewled again. Smiling she said, Shiro has decided that your punishment is to dress in what Lee and Guy does. You will wear this all day and all night. You will wear it in public and will not wear anything else for the next four weeks. Ten Ten blanched hearing this and shakily said, Yes Naruto Haim. Naruto then turning to Yugo said, Your turn, and it had better be damn good. Yugo swallowing said, I am eternally sorry for what I have done. I only did it to relax you, as you seem stressed at the moment. I also gave Jiraiya directions to the hot springs, knowing full well what he was going to do with the information. I know that I broke your trust but please forgive me for doing so. Naruto hearing this could feel her inner darkness roaring for the death of Yugo. She closing her eyes, said, Ino and Yugo, you two have somehow brought out my inner sociopath. Right now I want to do nothing but shoot the both of you with a death beam. She opening her eyes revealed her glowing golden eyes as she said, I will not be relinquishing either of you from your lives. Instead from this moment on the two of you will be on probation. I will be watching the both of you like hawks, but you'll never see me, if you even speak to the pervert. Her power and killing intent tripled and everyone in the village swore that death was hovering over them. She then tilting her head said, I will show the true power of the cold clan, and reveal my inner darkness and show everyone why it is not a good idea to breach the trust of Naruto Uzumaki in Namikaze, queen of the goddamn cold clan. This roar was the last thing that came out of her mouth before Shiro transformed into his lion form and roared, get the out. Everyone did indeed get the out, as this was the first time they had heard Shiro speak, and he sounded way too close to Naruto's second form. Once everyone was out of her room, she slowly stood up and said, Come Shiro-kun we have paperwork and a nap to get to. Shiro transforming back into his cub form followed Naruto into the second room. Tsunade in her new office shook her head spotting the reason Naruto was upset. She sighing said, I have the feeling I'm going to need to get her out of the village, and quickly before she kills someone. She looking at a sheet of paper said, Namely the Uchiha and his loyal howler monkey. She was about to send for Naruto when Kuranai came in with her team. She looking at Tsunade said. Tsunade saw Makiba kun has been approached by someone from the land of snow. They wish to ask for assistance in taking it back. I believe that you sent team 7 minus Naruto to escort the princess to snow, hidden as a movie. Tsunade hearing this blinked and looked at the mission. She quickly face palmed as team 7 was way in over their heads, even with Kakashi. She then blinked and got the perfect idea. She smiling said, Kuranai you have my permission to accept this mission, on the condition that you take Naruto with you as backup. Kuranai blinked and asked, Does this condition have anything to do with Tayuya appearing in front of Anko earlier to be her training partner or Ten Ten dressing like Guy? Tsunade shaking her head said, I need to get her out of the village before someone pushes her past her limit and she kills them. Kuranai hearing this said, All right she can come along. But I'm in command, right? Tsunade nodding said, Yes, just get her out of here. Kuranai nodding turned to her team and said, Go pack team, we have a country to save. All three students nodded and took off. Kuranai then shaking her head took off towards Naruto's apartment. Naruto reading a book about how to tell the difference between poison mushrooms and regular mushrooms blinked when there was a knock on her door. She not moving said, Shiro kun go answer the door. Shiro Muling walked to the door and opened it. Kuranai blinked spotting the lion from before looking up at her with curious eyes. Shiro then muled and let her in. 
She's shaking her head searched out Naruto. She blinked finding her reading her book, while painting a gorgeous picture with her tail. Naruto looking up from said book blinked spotting Kurenai. She tilting her head asked, What can I help you with Kurenai-chan? Kurenai smiling explained what Tsunade had told her. Naruto nodding said, I'll be ready in a second. I have to grab my travel gear, and maybe a parka. She hearing a mule, giggled and said, Make that two parkas as Shiro kun refuses to go out into that winter wonderland. Kurenai giggled hearing this. Naruto telling Kurenai to get comfortable, grabbed her gear, and with a little difficulty slipped a pink parka over Shiro. She smiling picked him up and said, Simply adorable. Shiro mewled and started to scratch his nose. She then putting Samahata on her back, walked to Kurenai with her black parka unzipped but on. She smiling at Kurenai said, Myself and Shiro are now ready Kurenai sensei. Kurenai spotting Shiro giggled at how adorable he looked. Kurenai then leading them to the gate, blinked as her team still wasn't there yet. She sighing turned to Naruto who was trying to keep Shiro inside of his parka. She giggled at this. Naruto hearing this blinked and asked, What's so funny Kurenai-chan? Kurenai blushing said, Shiro-kun seems not to want to remain in his parka. Naruto smiling down at Shiro who was looking up at her with big innocent red eyes said, He doesn't mind the parka, he's just trying to keep me level-headed as he knows that I'm upset. She kissing Shiro on the nose said, He's very good at his job and I love him for it. Shiro hearing this mewled and puffed out his chest. Naruto and Kurenai giggled at this. Naruto realizing that they had some time to kill asked, Kurenai Haim would you like to hear a song? Kurenai remembering how Ino had described Naruto's singing nodded and said, I would love that Naruto Haim. Naruto smiling closed her eyes and said, I wrote this about Eero Sanin and his continued attempts at wooing Tsunade-san. It's called Million Dollar Houses. I hope you, Shiro-kun and Samahata Haim enjoy. She opening her eyes sweat dropped spotting everyone around them swooning, including the client. She turning to Kurenai was about to ask how was it when Shiro actually started to cry. She feeling her eyes softening picked up the lion and nuzzled his face. She trying to get the lion to stop crying said, It's not about me Shiro-kun it's about the old pervert who writes those smutty books and his love for the old lady warming up the hat for me. I haven't broken any bones for anyone and I'm fine. Shiro looking at her with tears in his red eyes mewled. She smiling said, Of course I mean it. Shiro hearing this mewled happily. She giggling put the lion down, who instantly went back to scratching his nose. She turning to Kurenai asked, How was that Kurenai-chan? Kurenai still swooning said, I see why Ino calls you her dark queen and AY siren. Kurenai smiling gently said, That song was dark, but romantic at the same time. It makes me want to cry, but at the same times makes me want to take you to a private place and make sweet love to you until the end of days. Naruto blushed hearing this and said, Kurenai-chan. Kurenai giggled at this and said, Then you blush and I remember that you're not some great tragic poet, but ninja of the village hidden in the leaves. Who could crush an entire army with a swing of your tail, and still new to the whole sweeping people off of their feet thing? Naruto hearing this smirked and asked, so I swept you off of you feet a Kurenai Haim. Kurenai now blushing turned spotting her snickering students and said, Well this mission isn't gonna start itself. Let's get going. She then walked out of the gate followed by team 8 and the client. Naruto giggling picked up Shiro and said, Notice she deflected the question Shiro Kun. Shiro getting comfy in her arms mewled. The group got about a mile away from Konoha when they heard someone scream, I am not old you smart ass brat. Naruto giggled at this and said, says the old lady with a genjutsu on to keep her looking young forever. Everyone laughed at this, including the client. The end. Now we will see you in the next video.